This here is a project made by a multi-platinum producer and I'm going to show you the secrets that lots of producers try and keep to themselves. I've been fortunate enough to spend the last four years working with the multi-platinum Grammy nominated producers on the Wave Grind team and there's so much I've learned that I guarantee will make your beats better that I'm going to teach you in this video. The first step is the melody. This is usually the first thing that the artist hears when deciding whether or not to use or buy a beat and it's also the first thing a listener is going to hear when deciding whether or not to skip a song or add it to their playlist. The first thing to do is learn how chord progressions affect the emotions of your melody. Lots of producers pretend to not care about music theory, but it's very important and I guarantee you top producers know so much more than you think. If you have a look at this chart here, here are the most common chord progressions for different genres of music. In FL Studio, if you click this little arrow at the top here, click view and scale highlighting. You can actually select a scale, like this one is C minor for example. If you click Alt B to make sure that these background notes are turned on, you can make sure that every single note you play is in this scale. And then all you have to do to follow this chord progression is have a look at the Roman numeral number. For example, one will be here, three will be here, five will be here, and this will be four. And then if you go and build chords out of these, and get whichever kind of emotion you want. If you want a bit of a happier resolution, that's when you go and change this last chord to a major chord. You can go and use a chord tool like the free one that comes in FL Studio or a similar tool in HDAW. If you right click here, you can actually select which chord progression. I've selected D sharp minor natural. And if you click generate, it's gonna pick different chords like this. And one thing I recommend switching up is the timing. I'm gonna turn the metronome on. I just opened up this project by Priority Beats, who's a multi-platinum Grammy nominated producer. If you have a listen, you'll hear how simple the melody is. For example, we have this first layer here, which has a very trippy kind of piano. I'm gonna show you how to get the same effect in a second. And we also have this very simple keyboard here. You see, we have the exact same timing here that I showed you where we bring the chord in slightly earlier. And these are the actual chords themselves here. These are really simple. This is something you'll find in like a 21 Savage beat, for example, where the chords are really mysterious, dark, and simple. One really easy way to take a chord progression and turn it into a melody is by chopping it up. And you can use plugins like Gross Beat, for example. You can use SliceX, or you can chop it up manually. For example, I'm gonna grab uh, just like this basic one here. It just adds a bit of life to it. And these repeats here can essentially act as other different notes that are playing. So it's building a melody inside your chord progression. If you want to add more energy to a melody and make it feel like it's breathing, you can add a slight volume side chain here. It can also be pretty common to add a gate like this, which makes things sound so mysterious and you can just imagine the absolute hardest beat you've ever heard coming in on top of a simple melody like this. Something else you can do to build a melody inside a chord progression is using an arpeggiator tool. I'm going to click Alt A. You can change the settings like the time multiplicator, for example, and also the gate, which changes the length of the notes. And it's a really easy way to go and transform a chord progression like the ones I showed you how to build into a different melody. One very important thing to keep in mind is that the vocals are technically an instrument. They're pitched and they sit in the same kind of EQ range as the instruments themselves. So it's really important to make sure that your melodies aren't gonna clash with the vocals. One very simple way you can do this is by going and downloading an acapella. With AI, it's so easy to go and rip the acapella of most songs and go and see how that sounds with the melody and also the finished beat, which I'm gonna show you shortly. All right, you have the melody ready now it's time to make some multi-platinum drums. I spent the last few weeks going and recreating the drum beats, the top couple hundred songs of all times. And what I learned is pretty interesting. First, it's really common for a two-step hi-hat sequence to be in most of these tracks. And it's also very common for a basic clap or snare sequence to be in most of these tracks as well. So there's absolutely nothing wrong having a simple kind of hi-hat feel like this here. And if you want to spice it up, you can go and add different textured hi-hats on top of it. It's also extremely common for the bass line to hit on just the root notes of the melody. As you can see, we have this D5 here, this bass line. And if you go and have a look at the chord progression, that's almost doing the exact same thing. It's only hitting one extra time versus the root note of this melody down here. So if you're stuck when creating a bass line, go and pick a note. I try and pick the one that's closest to C because that one tends to sound the best. Go and copy it like this, for example. Go and paste it on your 808 and you have something that looks incredibly similar to this here. There's this percussion here. 
This percussion here as well is a very simple open hi-hat sequence, a crash, and another open hi-hat here. Altogether, the beat sounds really simple, but there's so much room here for an artist to do whatever they want. We also have more layers coming in a little bit later. There's no rules when making beats and you can be as creative as you want. But I think that if you're trying to get placements and beat sales, going and making a simple two-step hi-hat sequence, going and adding a basic clap and making sure that your 808 is in key and hitting on the right notes is 99% of what you need to make a platinum beat. Then you can go and add balance by adding some hi-hat rolls, adding some open hi-hats and adding some perks. One of the simplest ways to spice up a hi-hat sequence is go and grab this for example. I'm gonna click Control L, which is gonna connect all these notes together. I'm gonna go and select the magnet to something a little bit lower or like half step. And I can go and slice up these notes instantly by clicking Control U. And then also going into one third B, for example, and adding one here. And if you wanted to spice up um, the snare and clap sequence, for example, you can go and grab like a rim or a perk and just go and add some fills. It can be helpful to go and lower the volume of some of these perk rolls. And if you really want to be a nerd, you can go and add some panning like this here. I was also lucky enough to have platinum producer JB send in a project for one of his beats here. Which has an absolutely amazing melody here. And if we go and have a look at the beat. you'll notice a very similar thing. We have a two-step hi-hat sequence. We have this snare sequence, which is almost the basic snare sequence, but we have this one here, which is at a slightly different timing. We also have this 808 here. And then we have this rim here. One thing I'm noticing is how simple these beats are compared to mine. I feel like if I go into my playlist, for example, I scroll down and I have like 14 different tracks going on. But if you delete all the spaces, there's only a few tracks and a few instruments that are actually being used here, which is so crazy because I feel like it's so common for producers, including me, to go and add so many layers. But it's important to know that even multi-platinum producers are keeping their beats way more simple than that. I just want to grab a random acapella like off the grid, for example. I didn't bother about lining up the BPM, but if you want to do that, you'd set your project BPM to the BPM of the acapella, right click on time, click project tempo, and then go back to the BPM of your project. But the one thing I'm focusing on here is just making sure that the vocals fit. As you can hear, you can really clearly hear the vocals. If you were to drag in an acapella and you could barely hear the vocals and they're fighting for their life to find room in the mix, that's when you would go through and start deleting some of the melody layers or lowering them in the mix, which I'm about to show you. The last step is the mixing, and this is really important. Just going through and having a look at the mix that JB did here, for example, you'll see that there's an EQ here cutting out some of the lows which is really important because all these notes down here is where the bass would be hitting. So there's so much room for the bass in this mix because of this EQ here. Looking at how Priority Beats mixes their beats, as you can see, they've done most of it in the channel rack. So they've actually gone and changed the channel volume. So then they haven't had to do anything in the mixer. And all they use the mixer for is going and adding some different plugins and also going and adding a soft clipper on the master. So without the soft clipper. And then with it turned on. I would say one of the best things you can do is go and find the actual instrumental for a beat that you really like. Go and download it, have it on another screen or another tab and go and listen to the mix on that beat when you're going and leveling your beat. So when you're going and setting the levels here, for example, if you really can't figure out what kind of volume you want the snare to be hitting at, go and have a listen to another beat, hear how the snare fits in the mix and go and change the volume of your snare accordingly. This also applies for the pitch of the snare and the sample. If you realize that you want to change it, it's really worth going and changing another beat. This isn't to go and copy it or go and steal some ideas but it's really important to go and listen to how multi-platinum producers like JB and Priority actually mix and level their beats and what samples they pick. As you can see the arrangement here is pretty basic. We have the beat coming in at the start. We then have this eight bar sequence here <laughs> with just the chords and eight bars after that we have the beat coming back in again. We then have some different melody layers coming in slightly later. 
If you have a look at this guide here that I built, I show you the most common arrangement for hip hop songs. It's so easy to follow this. In an intro, for example, we would just have the melody, which is like this here, for example. If you want to find what to use for the verse, it'll basically be a really simple version of the beat, usually with much less melody layers. And then the chorus or hook is going to have these extra melody layers that come in. So you'll have those three sections of your beat. You'll have the intro, for example, you'll have the verse, which is here, and then you'll have the hook, for example, and basically whichever arrangement you follow, if you want to grab the intro, if you want to grab a verse, if you want to grab a hook, you're basically just going to drag it in like that. Looking at JB, his arrangement is really simple as well. He even kept his drums just in the pattern. And if you wanted to spice it up, it'd be as easy as going into a pattern, clicking make unique, and then you can go and add like a hi-hat roll, for example, if you wanted to like spice things up after eight bars. But it's really important not to overthink it. And remember, if you're setting these beats out for placements, if the artist doesn't like the arrangement, the engineer is gonna go through and change it anyways. Just make sure that you send them the track outs so that they can go and actually arrange this beat with all of the layers separately. I hope you learned a lot from these multi-platinum producers that were kind enough to send me their beats. If you wanna follow them, I'll leave their social media on the screen here. If you wanna get hundreds of free samples, that are really high quality that you can use to make multi-platinum beats. Download the free legacy sample pack by clicking the link in the description. If you want to get over 10,000 emotional royalty free samples, which are all split up into emotions, so you can pick whichever emotion you want to produce in and then go and drag and drop those emotional royalty free melodies and samples into your projects, click the other link in the description for the emotional essence library, which is currently 90% off. If you want to learn how other top producers make their beats, I've gone and broken it down in multiple very high quality videos. So click one of the recommended videos and I hope to see you there.